And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some spider aggro. Playing this deck today because it's Christmas Day and so I wanted a green and red deck um, for green and red being the Christmas colors. And so that's what we got. We got uh, our green red deck here with spider aggro. Plus there's a whole bunch of Aurelian Soul running around these days. We've played against that a bunch today and I wanted a, a fast aggro deck that could maybe go underneath these Targon um, celestial decks because it's hard to have a better top end than the invoke cards. So let's kind of play a burn deck. We have our Imperial Demolitionist, our Doom Beast. Those are going to be able to do Nexus damage. We can get multiple copies of either of those with Stalking Shadows. We'll also have Noxion Fervor and Decimate dealing the Nexus damage and even a Captain Farron at the top end that can create some more Decimates for us. So we're going to try to get early damage in, have fearsome units with our spiders. You know, um, they all basically, basically all the spiders have fearsome. Stygian Onlooker with the fearsome and try to get as much damage in as possible and then finish out the job with our direct Nexus damage. All right, so let's play some spider aggro. Maybe not. All right, so how do we do against this Grand Plaza deck? We're going to mulligan the Frenzied Skitter for sure. And um, I don't know about these two. I'm keeping Arachnoid Horror, absolutely. But I'm not sure about Doom Beast and Stalking Shadows to kind of start out with. I guess, yeah, I'm going to send the Doom Beast back. I will keep Stalking Shadows. That's what we're going to do. Okay, we have turn two Elise. You'll get some more spiders. I pull the strings. We found our top end. Hush. Our one Captain Theron. Okay, yeah, Platinara. I guess this is any tips for not tilting. I think the thing to do with Okay, so I guess this is kind of what I do. I mean, hopefully hopefully this, this helps. But basically, just kind of realize that you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days um, as far as wins and losses go. Like, some, some days things work out, you know, things go really well for you. Other days things go really well for your opponents and you get some, some bad luck. That kind of stuff. You can't really control that. And that's just going to happen. What you, what you can control is just focus on, like, learning and improving. So instead of focusing on like wins and losses, like that's how you get tilted is if you really are focusing on wins and losses and you, you know, you have a, a day where you're losing a bunch and, and you know, you'll get tilted. Instead, focus on on learning and like what's happening in the games, um, how to improve and, and that kind of stuff. If you're if that's what, where your focus is, um, you won't be as uh, as tilted. I guess. so. OK, so they have challenger, so I can. You know, so I'm, I'm thinking, like, do I play anything first? But they also have Fearsome, so I guess I don't have to really worry about them playing like like a Haunted Relic with a bunch of little blockers, because they have Fearsome. So, I will play Frenzy Skater. And yeah, little little breaks, that's a good good thing too, floating, is like, take, take little breaks, stretch, make sure you get up, stretch between games. That kind of stuff. Alright, GG's. Good job, spiders. They're too fast for the ephemerals. Alright, same matchup again. Hopefully it plays out exactly like last time, having a turn three leveled up Elise, which I guess that could possibly happen. Do I keep... We're keeping the first three cards. Do we keep the second Arachnoid Horror? So I guess right now, yeah, I think so. Right now I'm looking at like, you know, turn two spider, turn three spider, turn four double spider. I wish that we had the attack token on turn two and turn four again, like we did last game. So 
So that thing's going to be a 3-3, three, three, the Bark Beast. So I can play the Arachnoid Horror and trade with the 3-3. Three, three. Because I, I want the 3-3 three, three out of here so it doesn't have the ability to block Elise. Because I think I'll lead with Elise. I guess I could see the argument of leading with Arachnoid Horror, actually, instead. Because if they play, like, a Lucian or a Senna... I, I don't think they'll have Senna, but yeah, they play Lucian. They're more likely to trade with Elise with the Lucian. And then, you know, Arachnoid Horror, they're probably not trading with Arachnoid Horror. So now this gives me the opportunity to play two more House Spiders on this turn, and then Elise on this turn, and level up Elise. So as long as they don't have Grand Plaza, I feel pretty good. Good. So no, I don't want them to trade with their Lucian, because I, I want to level up Elise. All right, tough call here. Level up Elise or kill their Lucian. I could Noxion Fervor, kill their Lucian. No, I'll probably just take it all. So this is going to be me taking... Uh, so we're going to take 8 from this thing. We'll block it one time with the Onlooker. So we'll take 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I go down to 2. I guess that's a lot. Okay, now we're going to go with... We're going to go with killing Lucian. Yeah, I, I calculated the damage after, uh, after Lucian. Okay, sweet. They were all in on Lucian. Sweet 2-0. Okay, I'll, I'll update the deckless command after this. I'm sorry I didn't do that before this. Alright, what are we doing? We're mulliganing... I like the two Stalking Shadows. This is not a good matchup for us, by the way. Not a good matchup at all. Yay, no Go Hard. The Go Hard deck is really good against aggro. Out of all the matchups, we don't want to face this. You have like this and like Nibia control. Those are the kind of decks we do, do not want to face. Closer. I don't fight. Trading doesn't really feel like a win. We play and build rules, son. Uh, no, I haven't really considered that phantom, but I'm. But that's that's definitely possible to play a second Captain Farron over a Decimate or a crowd favorite. Um, I think you can, you can absolutely do that. This would stop Twisted Fate gold card. Cool. That was my ephemeral copy. So that worked out well. There's nothing to fear. That didn't work out so well. This deck matches up really well against us. What's 
What's your hurry? Leveled up Elise. Yuck, I was hoping to find House Spider whenever I cast my Stalking Shadows. I was looking for House Spider. What is the plan? Remember the objectives. Make the Empire proud. So they even have like a bunch of things that can block fearsome right now. No, I would not I would not want crumble in this deck. It's that's not we're not really trying to like play a, a control you know removal kind of match, you know, de our deck's not all, not about that. We're not we're not about playing crumble or about dealing damage to the enemy nexus. Crumble doesn't do that. Okay, so 3-3 three, three jumps in front of there, 4-3 jumps in front of here, 1-1 one, one jumps in front of here. I'm just doing as much damage as I can, honestly. I'm. This is not like a, a good attack as far as like keeping things alive, but them having a leveled up Elise is also not good for me as far as keeping things alive. So I don't think that keeping things alive is going to have me win this game. Okay, next game. What a Withering Whale. Web. Yeah, I understand Fierce... Okay, so... It allows you to... It helps you win against Fearsome, but I, I just don't think I wouldn't be worried about Fearsome one bit right now. I just I don't think Fearsome is good at beating any other deck. I, I don't think that, that I just don't think Fearsome's very good. And plus, you just don't see it anymore. Are we gonna mulligan our crowd favorite? Crowd favorite's really good when we're able to go wide. Draven Ezreal is going to try to keep us from going wide. So, what the reason why I like our I like our chances better here against Draven Ezreal than against Gohard. They also have great removal, and so that's tough playing against great removal. But the thing about this deck is it doesn't have the Nexus healing that Shadow Isles provides, and so I think that that's going to be good for us not having that. Um, we're going to go right to attacks with this Elise the next turn. I'm taking three. Never mind. I think it had a free three damage. I'm gonna go immediately to attacks before they play Draven to block. So young. Time for a true display of skill. That's not great for me. Um, you know, a bunch of. For Absolutely free mystic shots. That's not great for me. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Fact, I am superior life form. Safety disengaged. Charge! I'll just save Demolitionist. Smooth as silk. I can't play the Precious Pet first because I need to be able to play an additional Elise 
if they go if they go removal for a lease right here. Stun doesn't really matter. That's arguably the worst card to stun out of all these was that one. But if they would have they would have killed the Elise, I would have wanted to play a new Elise. That makes sense why they stunned it. Stalking Shadows, one of our best draws. Yeah, I'd like a Stalking Shadows. Captain Farron, of course, also pretty awesome. Yeah, we're playing some spider aggro. And yeah, it, it wasn't... It's not necessarily... Usually when I... Okay, whenever I see people play Withering Whale, I usually say that, see them play a bunch of Withering Whale, but it's not necessarily that, like, Withering Whale... Like, I'm not saying that Withering Whale is not a good card in Go Hard. What I'm saying is there's no reason to play it because it... It's just really good against your matchups that are already really good anyway. Basically, it's unnecessary. Speaking of necessary, though, that Captain Farron is pretty nice. The eight damage. Okay, not a damage. Draven out. So I'm definitely playing Demolitionist this turn to get it out of my hand. So I, I guess we're just going to do the damage to the House Spider. It's either that or deal the damage to the Elise. would be better against Static Shock. You know, I'd rather do the damage to the least against Static Shock, but then whenever you think of, like, Ravenous Flock and, um, you know, then a Mystic Shot being able to kill the and that kind of stuff. For we'll just do it over here. For the glory of Noxus. So they're down to eight. I don't think they have any way to heal their Nexus. We're going to play Captain Farron, and then we'll be able to cast two Decimates. So as long as we don't take 13 damage this turn, I believe the two Decimates should be able to kill my opponent the next turn. Let's do this. So that looks like that's not us taking 13 damage. Got access, need victims. I won't pass. So I can't think of any ways for them to heal the Nexus. Any ways to stop two decimates. They can't think of anything either. Alright, we are three and one. Um, so if, if you're new to the channel, this is what I do every day. I play Legends of Runeterra. We usually play four different decks a day, usually today. Uh, with it being Christmas Day, I just have, you know, I just have uh, plans today, so we only got time for the three. But I usually play four different decks a day at this time. Um, so ho hopefully to see y'all back again. Um, I, I usually play tons of crazy decks, you know, like uh, viewers submit decks to me. And I'll play those, and so we play all the champions and, and everything. Uh, don't don't necessarily play the, the real popular tier one decks all the time that you see on all the other channels. Okay, Freljord, Shadow Isles. 
with Callista. So there should be a They Who Endure deck. I like this opening hand. I really like Fearsome against the blockers that They Who Endure provides. We can have the Legion Saboteur immediately. That was the card I was thinking about. I was honestly thinking about mulliganing the Legion Saboteur. And now seeing the Hapless Aristocrat um, does make me wish that I would have mulliganed that. Yeah, I, I agree there, KX. Yeah, we, we had to kill that. Um, we did have to kill that Ezreal last game. That was that was a big, real big deal. Well, that's a hand. Turn two, ten, ten power. That's a hand right there. Fishies! Merry Christmas, Fishies. All right, and then a Callista. That's a heck of a hand. Turn three, 14 power with Callista. Heck of a hand. Moving it to sight. Routes closed. All right, let's see what we got. Precious pet. It's really the, you know, the question is, is if we kill Callista or not. I'm gonna go with not kill Callista and try to have these fearsomes and these kill them. Wait, you have to attack first. You can attack second if you want. I mean, if they have if they have removal, I'm in a lot of trouble if they have removal. Yeah, I'm in a lot of trouble now. That was not something I could afford. That five, that's five health difference. So we're in a lot of trouble, but the game's not over yet. But doesn't look good. Because, you know, that, that five health difference, right? They're at seven. Now we're talking. Okay, they're at 12. So I need to Noxion Fervor here, because, like, we have, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of problems going on. I kind of need a Noxion Fervor before my things die, but then I'm wasting too much mana and I can't cast the Decimates. If I cast Decimate right now, then I don't have, like, the units anymore to Noxion Fervor. So I'm, I'm just in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Stony Suppressor could be good against, against like, your Zoe Invoke decks. I could see that. The thing about Stony Suppressor, so you, you want to put it in an all-unit deck, the thing is you need to be able to make the 1-3 body matter. That's the thing about Stony Suppressor is... Um, you need to be able to make that 1-3 body matter. And so that, that usually means like being able to play a deck that can win um, fast enough so that like the the speed reduction that it provides of like slowing down the opponent's spells that you're able to take um, good enough ad advantage of that ability and be able to kill them fast enough. But it's hard to do that with just a 1-3, right? So it's like how do you... How do you balance that all out? Like basically, you know, like how do you have, how do you take a one three that slows your opponent down some and make it so you, you can have that one three be really aggressive and be able to finish out games before they last too long. Cause the longer the game, the less that ability matters. Cause um, each additional turn, which is the, the more mana you have, the less spending one additional mana per spell matters. So you, you need to have pretty quick games to make it where the spending one additional mana is a um, tax that is too difficult to overcome, but then you're also playing a two mana one three. So how do you, you kind of put those together? 
That's why I like Vanguard Bannerman is very good with that, because Vanguard Bannerman can put a bunch of power into play, including making that 1-3 body matter. Yeah, Plaza Plaza can make it larger as well. But that's that's just kind of like the questions that, that you kind of need to ask when, when building a Stony Suppressor deck. Okay, so there we go. We went 3-2 and two with Spider Aggro. Overall, I was very impressed with how our deck looked. I think it looked great against the Ephemeral deck, the Grand Plaza Ephemeral deck, which is a very popular deck. As you saw, we played against it two out of the five games and did win both of those. You're going to struggle against the Gohard deck. Like, that's that's just, you know, maybe your worst matchup. You know, like that or, like, a Nivea Control. Like, those are going to be, like, your worst matchups. Like, the, your, basically your Withering Whale decks. Um, with with your your Shadow Isles control decks with all of those removal spells with all the life gain, those are going to be difficult ones to defeat. And you don't play against those that often. We played against one here, you know, one out of five. But um, you know, you probably play against those Shadow Isles control decks maybe one out of ten games, right? Like maybe. And um, and see, so, you know, we played against one here, uh, but that's that's going to be your your toughest matchup. Didn't get to face any Aurelian Soul decks. Uh, we placed, played against plenty of Aurelian Soul decks with our other two, but not with this one, unfortunately. Uh, our other loss was just a, it was just an incredible um, Callista hand. Right, like that was, that's as good as that deck looks. And so we, you know, we lost that one. But that 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 wasn't necessarily a matchup that we're going to lose all the time. But they just had an incredible hand, and you know, sometimes you just got to tip tip your cap to your opponent with that one. But overall, three and two. Um, I think our I think our deck looks strong. I think this could be a good choice in this current metagame with um, the Targon Invoke decks being very popular and also with um, the Shadow Isles Grand Plaza decks being very popular. Those two are, are maybe the most popular things, and I think this could match up really well against both of those. Even though Targon does have like ways to heal the Nexus, you know, they're they're maybe playing like their star shapings or some people play Guiding Touch, but you know, they'll have some some ways to heal the Nexus. But we Still, still should be aggressive enough and with enough Nexus damage that you can handle, um, you know, some star shapings. All right, but that's what I got here for Spider Aggro. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you want to see on a stream and on, on YouTube for future videos. Um, and I, I'll play that. But have a happy holiday season and a Merry Christmas. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.